Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. We are here to discuss Let's Fucking Go. That is the official title that I'm going to say for L LFG, the HBO, docu um, HBO Max documentary that recently just came out. And I'm joined alongside two incredible people that I've known, but for the first time meeting, um, you know, so we have Steph C. What's you know up? <laughs> I was just going to keep it clean with the LFG, believe it or not, but you just went there, so I'm on board. Listen, wait, we'll talk. I, I do want to talk about that as a point within the documentary itself, but, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Amy, okay. go ahead and uh, introduce yourself as well. You know what? Let's just all dive in. Let's fucking go. Uh, <laughs> Amy Maestri, so happy to be here. Was so stoked that uh, Phil reached out and wanted to talk about this because I think I've just I've just been boiling over wanting to talk about it since I watched it so yeah I'm awesome. super stoked he, stoked he reached out to you too because I literally he like tagged us both in the post on Instagram and I was just like after show question mark <laughs> like <laughs> why why would we not do this so super exciting happy to be here absolutely so for those of you joining us and uh, we're going to discuss the movie um you know both in terms of what we saw obviously the larger context of things um, and all that stuff. Now, you know, it is recommended that you watch the documentary and then listen to us. But hey, you know what? We're going to we're going to talk about it. Uh, obviously, it's not like it ultimately spoils anything because it's, you know, news and things like that. But nonetheless, um, one of the things I wanted to kind of open up with, um, if you'll allow me, and then, you know, I do eventually I, I, I kind of want to start it and then taper into the background and give you guys the platform. But the um, you know, whenever you talk about sports, right, it allow it, there's this theoretical notion of me mediocrity, right? Um, me meritocracy, sorry, meritocracy, different M word. Yeah, Where, I was like, like, I don't know that that word fits, man. <laughs> yes, indeed. I jumbled it up. Um, apologies. But 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 this notion of like, you know, the best team wins, you know, uh, to the victor go and spoils and stuff like that. And in and, and this instance, it's so appallingly egregious that like... Um, meritocracy doesn't work, right? It's like, if there was ever an example of like, okay, fine, we're going to go with meritocracy, this would be that example. And yet it wasn't because, you know, whatever, we're just going to change the rules in that way. And for those of you out there that don't know what that words mean, and maybe I would be one of those people, what, will you break that word down? Do you mean like the, usually the team with the most money wins, like the Yankees have the most money so that they're good time after time and flip side of that, these women get paid pennies and they're winning? Kind of, it, it's it's this and and Amy, feel free to jump in too. But um, it's it's this idea that you know um, all things being equal, if you are like what you make is what you get. Like your value, that's what you get, right? You you have more value, you get more money. Is that a fair right. assessment, yeah. Amy? You think of the yeah, kind of yeah, I think so because it, it is. It's it's something that you look at and you do go like, oh, this is cut and dry. Like yeah. you look at the facts, you understand who this team is and how much they've accomplished and what they earn and what they've done. And you just go, oh, th this should be like a no brainer. But then, you know, sexism and misogyny runs rampant and it's not yeah. a no brainer anymore somehow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and I by guess the way, I was, I was kind of seeing that from the flip side, right? Because usually the teams that have that, you know, like it's it's one hand washes the other, right? It's like, yes, you should do that if you're the best, but usually the teams that have the most resources are the best. So that's why this makes this even better because these women have such small, like little buckets of resources and they're crushing. Yeah. And, and you know, mind you, for anyone out there, I'm not arguing for merit. Like, I think it's a bullshit concept to begin with. Yeah. But, but all the more reason, if you're going to make that argument, then this has to, this stands, right? And so in that sense, like, I... You know, I just want to, in, in this sense, like, so it's bullshit that you're not going to like allow it to be on that term, which again is a bullshit term to begin with, in my opinion. And number two, um, you know, before we even get to the women, I say, I really want to say like, fuck the guys team a little bit here, honestly. And I, I you know, maybe you guys don't agree with me, but I'll, from my perspective, the guys didn't get into the fucking U S world cup. They couldn't be fucking Trinidad and Tobago. Like, honestly, fuck them in that regard. Um, and the fact that like, you could have done something heroic, if nothing else, you could have stood by the fucking women and said, we support you. And none of those fuckers said one fucking thing. 
And I'm sorry, like, this is like a whole, you know. I know, you're a little heated. I love it. But in the same sense, like, like I 100% agree with you. And the biggest thing I think is out of everything you just said that none of the men said it. Like, when there was this unequal pay situation in Hollywood, actors are coming and saying, I want my counterpart to get paid more. Like, the fact that the men have not come out and said that is appalling. But in the same sense, it's like, and I understand it and I agree with your frustration, but I think that, and I could be totally wrong with this blanket statement, but I think the problem is a lot of men and men in charge might get on the defense if you come that, you know what I mean? It's like they need, it's like you don't want to be so aggressive because the people that actually need to hear you so that they understand why the change is necessary won't listen. So that's kind of like how I sometimes go back and forth in these situations. Like, yes, I'm mad. Yes, I think the women deserve to get paid equally, even if they weren't the superstar team that they are. They are the superstar team that they are. We've seen now from it's been proven and proven and proven. They agree with it. But for some reason, people won't listen. And not that you ever have to dumb yourself down to the listener. But in the same sense, like, how do we get changed? Because this goes back to 1999 when the women started bringing up. This is a 20 year process and change has not come so what like it's falling on deaf ears whatever needs to happen so it's like how do we redirect all that anger into actually doing something that creates the change and obviously i don't know that answer but i'm just saying you know what i mean like i get what you mean and that's why like that's why i specifically like it was a very deliberate part on my end to open this because i want to speak to the like if there's one thing i can do for this i want to speak to the guys directly that may be listening watching to this and enact them and as far as like the the U.S. men's go, like, listen, don't use all the curse words I just did and say, fuck this, fuck that. But there's a very calculated statement that could have been made and still could be um, that could have accomplished that. So that's yeah, why would the men not not play until the women get played, paid equally? Why would the yeah. men like. It just goes back to all the, you know, one nation, one team, you know, like all of this, you know, unity and like Carlos Cadero when he's at, you know, the parade, even trying to say that. And it's like, where is that unity? Where is it? Because like you said, the men have said nothing. The men can barely even qualify for Olympics half the time. And I think there's always that like ill-conceived notion of like, oh, equal pay for women somehow means that we're going to take away something from the men at the same time. And it's like, no, it means that they need to be able to be paid equally and be given fair and equal conditions. It's not like they're going to like stop funding the men's team in order to properly pay the women's team. Yeah, And I think what you said is really important point, because that is the standard notion. If someone else gets more, I get less. And I think in that lies the biggest problem. And to be honest, it's like the Federation had no problem paying the men what they're getting paid and they've never won. So it's like now the women are winning. It's creating them more income that they're just holding on to. So that's just bad business. Yeah. So, you know, I went off on my rant um, and hopefully I, I affected some people in, in a positive way. So but um, why don't we, Amy, let's why don't we start with you? How did you process the documentary? Um, and yeah, just just the ben- general like reaction to it. Yeah, I mean, I think my initial reaction was that it's not it's infuriating, obviously, like watching this, like if your blood isn't boiling, something's wrong with you watching this. But it's also so inspiring at the same time just to see these like world class athletes that are doing so much on the field that are doing so much in their personal lives that have so much going on are taking the time to go through this litigation process and to fight for not only themselves, but like they mentioned multiple times, like women deal with this everywhere. And not every woman gets to go on Good Morning America the next day to talk about it. Like I think Megan Rapinoe said that, you know, like that they're essentially there to be the voice for themselves, but also for the next generation of soccer players, for the next generation of any female athletes, or for just like that, you know, working class woman in middle America, who's not getting paid the same as her male counterparts. And I think like a really cool, almost like it felt like a B story in a way to this documentary was the sisterhood of this team. Like when women 
bond together. And I'm reminded of Brooke Baldwin um, just wrote a book called Huddle that's amazing that talks about the huddles of women and like how empowering they can be. And I feel like this documentary just shows it, like the support that they have for each other, like the FaceTime between Pino and press of just like supporting each other and saying like, you got to say no sometime, or you got to like watch your mental health too, like during all of this craziness. I think it was just a really cool side of the team to see too, that like, that's why they're so good on the field. They have each other's back for anything and everything. And they're fighting all of this craziness. And that's, I think, what makes them so good on the field as a unit, too. So I think there's so many different things happening that I loved about it. Yeah. Um, in case I forget, I definitely want to expand that point a little bit because it is a very all or nothing concept. But but Steph, um, I want to get to you, too. What was your reaction process um, you know, after? I mean, piggybacking off a little bit, what was just said by Amy, I mean, the biggest thing is it's the ultimate definition of team, right? Like on the field, off the field, like that was my biggest takeaway. Uh, I've actually had the luxury or whatever the correct word is of interviewing a couple of the players. I've interviewed Abby Wambach, um, Alex Morgan, Kristen Press. So it's like in speaking to them and knowing their character and not that I know them at all, I'm not trying to go that route, but it's like, to see, like there is a connection there that they are the woman athlete and doing the things that like I as a young woman athlete wanted to do you know what I mean so it was inspiring in all the right ways it was upsetting in all the right ways there was a constant ebb and flow of emotion for it and not only that it was actually made really well the editing was phenomenal the cinematography was phenomenal the soundtrack was phenomenal like it was anyone that didn't need to know everything about soccer. I mean, obviously we're three fans of the sport. We follow it. We know a lot of it. You know what I mean? So like, but without that, it was still a good educational fun piece to watch that I, so I think it was very well done as a whole. I really do. Yeah. Uh, as someone, you know, I, I, I watched a lot of documentaries and um, it was really well done in that sense. And I think um, here, my, my, you know, speaking of, the, the the process itself you know i do want to just touch upon the the idea that like oh the u.s federation didn't participate and it's like well they had the opportunity um and it's to me it's like no different than like when we were came out it's like they didn't have um i forget his name but uh but the former ceo of, of we work it's like they didn't interview him the benefit at least that documentary had is that there was so much footage on that guy that it didn't need it whereas here sure it felt you know, you could make that argument that it felt empty without it, but it's like that, 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 that was a choice. And if anything, it's reflective of how they dealt with this entire process to not be involved in any sense. Right. So to, to use that as a criticism against the, the women's team or the documentary filmmakers or so forth, I think is quite frankly, asinine. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure you guys don't disagree, um, but feel free to expand upon that. Either one of you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like U.S. Soccer, their whole MO has been say as little as possible. And we do. And when we do say something like say literally the worst fucking thing you can, it's essentially what they've done. They stay quiet. And then when they do speak up and say something, it's you can tell that they still don't get it with these public statements and what they're saying and like how they're portraying everything. So I do think it was a huge miss for them to not have their voice heard in this and i would have loved to hear that because i actually would have liked to see that conflict but they what are they gonna say <laughs> like they're not gonna do it i remember and i know we're jumping around a little bit so you know reel me in if if i get off track a little bit but i remember i was actually at the rose bowl game probably a year and a half ago two years ago and it was funny a friend of mine who i'm not going to mention but he actually was working the event as a cameraman for the U.S. Federation. And there was a, I have a video of me and the entire Rose Bowl chanting equal pay. And he came on a podcast that I had and he told me that he was specifically told not to put that on camera. So that like they know and manipulate the entire situation. So when we were all chanting equal pay or if someone had a sign in the stands that said equal pay, move the camera off of it. That's so like, even though they're not showing their face, they're still an active character and speaking. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's very obvious that they're trying to manipulate the situation. And I'm so curious why, like, do they just not have money? Like, I just don't understand. Like these women are generating all this money. You've set up this situation for men to get paid. If they were to generate money, the women are generating more, but they're not getting paid. Like it's simple math and it doesn't make sense. I want to take a stab at this. If I, <laughs> Ooh, stab um, it. Well, I, I just think I, th- I think it's this bullshit idea that like you just dig your heels in because you have to be the one that's right. And when I say you, meaning like the guys, right, the guys that of that are running this organization and so forth. And like by hell or high water, you will not succumb to any any logic, reason or whatever. I mean, I quite- think it's even more simple than that in the sense of like, I mean, obviously you might not have experienced this, Phil, but maybe you have. Don't get me wrong. I like to play ping pong. I think I'm pretty good at ping pong. If I beat a dude at ping pong, he's pissed. If I beat a woman at ping pong, it's okay. I think it boils down to the mere fact that men in certain things like sport don't want women to be better. Like they have to be in control. And like, I know that there's a generalization and and I try not to do that a lot, but I feel like with sports, it's a because it's competitive because it's physical it it crosses the line of the things that in the primitive world men are supposed to be better at women than in this area and when the women are better than the men it's like they just come unglued and don't know what the right thing to do is i think we're saying the same yeah i think we're saying the same thing ultimately just from different angles in that way and ultimately like i think you're correct in that sense like when they came out with the statement of like uh, I, I don't have it verbatim, but basically like the, the idea that men are just inherently better, right? Their words, not mine. Please don't attack me. I, I don't think that at all. No, but, Phil is but, one but of the good guys out there, people. <laughs> Phil's on our side. Don't take but, that sound bite and take it out of context. Like, <laughs> um, but right, I mean, like they literally said that. Yeah. And it was like, so I can't defend them, but uh, Amy, you were, I cut you off. So go ahead. No, no. Yeah. I was just agreeing. I mean, like it, it really is. I think it's a combination of them just digging in their heels, knowing that like this, this was their stance from the beginning and they are not going to change it. And the idea that, yeah, it's the women's team is clearly better. And so, but their argument that they always go back to is like you said, like the inferiority of like women in sports and like biologically and all of these things that it's like, that's not even what's being discussed. (laughs) They went above and beyond. Like they actually went above and beyond to show how sexist they are. That didn't even have to be brought up. They took it upon themselves to put an even bigger target on their back to show what assholes they're being in this entire process and how they truly 100% don't understand the core issue. And all they see is men are better at sports than women, because that is how it works in their brains. And that's it. And nothing is going to change their minds on that. Yeah. I, thought, I mean, that was a pretty crazy cop out their statement about that. Um, I almost feel like as well that the statement that they did get paid more because they won more, you know how they would say, I had it written down somewhere, but I don't know what it was, but like, it was pretty much they're like, well, but in this year, the women actually did earn more than the men, but they had to play like, you know, 50 more games. They had to win this. They had to win that. And it was just like the audacity to spell it out like that. That was almost not more, but just as much or more annoying to me that that's kind of like how they they were like, well, but they did get paid more. They wound up earning more money. And it's like earning more money and getting paid more are two different things. That's like saying that someone that works one day a week versus someone that works five days a week, man, the five days a week made more. So you should be fine. No, you know, like that was just like, there was very ignorant comments, I believe on their behalf of, of how they took a stance on this. Yeah, I mean, even their their co-counselor at the at towards the end was saying she was like, they need to look at rate of pay. It's not overall compensation. It, legally speaking, even on her, you know, on, in her end, she's saying it, it's rate of pay. Like you said, I mean, sure, if I want to work 80 hours a week, then I would make more than my male counterpart who maybe only works 20 hours a week, but gets paid more than I do per hour. So it's like for them to see that as an argument of like it being equal and fair, 
is just, again, it's like, it's mind blowing to understand where these arguments come from. And the fact that they're digging their heels in so hard on them because none of them make any fucking sense. Yeah. And you know, the, the thing that really, like, I, I thought the documentary did a wonderful job of laying out in sequence. And then you got to the core, like bullet points, right. Of what the lawsuit is about. And the fact that like, you know, I could, I could have seen the training facilities being like, okay, the guys get the really good stuff. The women kind of get the B feel, but the fact that they're putting them up in motel six. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why could you see that being okay? No, I'm not saying I could see that being okay, oh, but oh, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm saying I could have, I could have foresaw that. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. The I'm motel like, six. NCAA championships. We just saw what happened. March madness. No, no, no. I, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying I, this is not something I agree with. I'm just saying like, got it, got it, got that it. wouldn't have shocked me. Right. Fair. But I honestly, like, I just don't even get like, you know, forget, like, I, I don't know, like in a, in a weird twisted sexist way, why wouldn't you put the women up in a good hotel because they're women and they deserve it. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to be sexist about it, give them good accommodations. Instead of fucking like, right. if, if it's going to be anything sexist, they should have the nicer hotel. I get, I exactly. get what you're I, you know? totally, but I don't know, man. It's just at the end of the day. And, and another thing that got me was when they were like, yeah, but the women agreed to this. And I actually had a question and I tried to research it and I couldn't find the answer. So maybe one of you guys know, but how long is their contracts? Like, do they agree and agree you know how they were all like well the women agreed to this so now you can't like agree to a certain pay and then when you want when you do good and want more and you don't get it you don't you're mad so it's like do they have to re-sign a contract and do you guys think there would ever be a situation where the women just wouldn't play like do we think that's ever going to happen yeah i mean i was curious about the same thing i couldn't really find anything either because i'm not sure because yeah it's like okay this is your contract forever like what are the terms like when does this end when can they renegotiate. And at that point, yeah, what does that re what does that negotiation look like? But I mean, honestly, I, I could see that happening. I could see them saying enough is enough, you know, like th you either do this or the only team that you have in this country that wins anything that brings in new sponsorship dollars at this point, because your other team isn't even making it to half of the major tournaments. You need to step up. Otherwise we're just not, I could, I could see that happening at some point. Yeah. And you mentioned something really awesome too, sponsorship dollars. I mean, granted, there's a lot of stuff that's, that's wrong about this team and how they're monetized and, and all that, but I have to give it big ups to secret. That ad was amazing. Also yeah. to Luna bar. I don't know if you guys are aware, but at one point when there was a, a pay different, like a pay gap, Luna bar paid over $700,000 to the players so that they got the money that they should so it's like companies, I mean, I eat a Luna bar every day now. That's my go-to bar. And it's just like, you got to put your money where your mouth is, you know? And that's like how we were talking earlier about the guys game. There was like a big guys. I don't even know. I'm not, and I'm a big sports person. I don't even know. And I'm like, I'm not going to watch it because then that's going to be my checked box of more revenue towards the guys. So I'm just not even going to watch it. Yeah. yeah. And it really is like the, the level of like what, where people are paying attention it, it all goes to the women. I mean, when you look at social media, like tweets per minute and records broken on social media during their World Cup games, that they get more, you know, revenue dollars right now than the men do, that they bring in more revenue than the men do, that they have higher TV ratings than the men do now, you know, and it's because they're making it to these tournaments, they're making it to finals, they're making it to games that people who aren't even soccer fans tune in to watch just because it's America making it to the final of the World Cup or the final of the Olympics. And I mean, I know I have a ton of friends who are not soccer fans, don't know the first thing about either team. But if I asked them, name five people from the women's team, they probably could. They would rattle off Alex Morgan, Megan Rapino, Kristen Press. And then I'd ask, name one from the men's team at any point in the history of the men's team. And, it, and it's crickets. Yeah. Because people don't pay attention to the men's team because they don't win. They don't play as many games. They don't get to as many tournaments. So then those revenue dollars... Where are they going? You know, and that's why I'm glad that other companies too. Like I think they mentioned an LFG was it Coke and Budweiser who stepped up after Carlos Carrero made that the statement about like, women being inferior, basically, and demanded to have a meeting with them. Like, what you can't say that. Like that's not you can't say those things about your own athletes, nonetheless. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, going back to the thing I put a pin on this, I mean, this really was all or nothing, right? It starts with the captain's meeting and it's very much like, it can't be like, okay, um, we have 19 women on board, but a couple there, if it goes, it goes, but we're not signing this paper. Like it really, you, you, that line has to be drawn. And that to me is incredible. Like that's just leadership at a whole new level. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if one person doesn't buy in, this doesn't hold, you know? And, and obviously like it, it, it was a long shot either way, right? Like that's what we saw. But, but imagine if just one person, and, and, and by the way, I'm not even saying anything negative in that sense, because I try to put myself in the, the shoes of them. And, and I thought that, that the documentary illustrated perfectly of like, this is your livelihood, albeit a shitty one, because you're not making a lot of money. You're having to do coaching jobs or restaurant jobs or how, whatever other jobs on the side to, to support your family. So it's like, I understand where fear comes in, you know? Um, but man, you know, the, uh, so I, I'll just say like, these girls have more balls than the guys do. Yeah. They you do. Know? And yeah. the bond that they have, I think allows them to have those balls. Like I remember when they were going through and they broke down, like Megan's got the confidence, you know, Kelly O'Hara's got a little bit of crazy that you need. You know what I mean? Like I would go into business with these women. They have everything covered. You know what I mean? And that's what a team does. Like where you're weak, I'm strong. Where I'm strong, you're weak. Like that's just how it goes for the ultimate team. And to be honest, stuff like that only makes them play better. It, you know what I mean? It's like they're, they're there because they're all great players. But who they are as humans and how they gel together as humans only adds to their game. And I, it was, you know, it's interesting because I didn't know, did you, were either of you aware that this was being filmed during the World Cup and all that stuff? I was unaware. No, I, I was unaware too, but it was just like how they were like, we have to win. And they come out and they beat Thailand 13, nothing. It was just like, could you imagine being them for that moment and being like, we got to win and just blowing it out, you know, and, and not telling anyone the background fight of what's going on in their world like how strong is that that's insane and i remember i remember they took a bunch of shit for beating uh you know for those insane score lines and it was like stop embarrassing them whatever and it's like yo the guys teams do it all the time they rack rack up the, the numbers because goal difference counts it's not just like right. let's beat the crap out of them goal difference counts I think a lot of people don't know that, to be honest. Like, if I, you know, and I'm but not it's still trying to like, sound like a know it all, but people that are just watching it for like the first, second, third time, they're just like, you know, where's the mercy rule? You know, I don't need them to know that. I need them to know they wouldn't say that about the guys, and I don't care what sport. Yeah, I was actually almost kind of surprised that didn't get brought up, and who knows, maybe it was in some interviews and it got left on the the editor's room floor. But it, it I just remember when that scoreline came out and everyone, and it's like they're in such a lose lose, like. They're going, we have to win. We have to win big. We have to make statements. We have to prove that we are worth this. And then they do that. And they have a bunch of misogynists coming at them saying, you really should have been kinder and stop scoring on the other team and trying to play that card. And I was just like, it's just, it's a lose, lose at that point. And it's like, no, you, yeah, that is like, they had so much going into that, like on their backs that they were carrying that whole time and stuff like that's such a good point too, that like, like to be going through all of that together and not being able to talk about it and having all of that writing on you. Like, this is why this team is so good. They just truly are such a unit together. Yeah. And the composure of that, you know what I mean? Like if you were getting criticized, like say, like put yourself in their shoes for a second, you're fighting for your worth, equal pay. You're crushing teams because your aggression is coming out in your sport. Then people are saying you played too good and you can't be like well i have to do it so that maybe i'll get paid what i deserve and they just don't say anything you know like that's just composure that's maturity that's leadership yeah, yeah. i mean i mean there was there was the moment right um when 45 tweeted at you know them and, and was basically an asshole about it and that i remember that moment um in history and it was and that kind of was I remember seeing that and 
that really threw down the hammer because it was basically like, you know, 45 being like, hey, why don't you win? And then like talk, right? And it was at the point where the women still, you know, they were well on their way, you know, progressing, but they hadn't, you know, until you win, you, you don't win, right? Um, and so it was to have... The, just just the confidence be like no we got this and i'm going to respond to this and we're going to be okay um it's a, it's a bet that paid off you know you really have to believe in yourself and your talents to be able to pull that off and kudos to to meg for doing it oh, i God. mean really she took the high road against the at time president of the united states like she didn't go back in a battle and that was, I literally, that was, I think, one of my favorite, I have a couple of my favorite quotes. And I think that was one of my favorite quotes where she was like, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> that was was, honestly, when, when he tweeted that, I was just like, this is the best thing that could ever happen. Cause you tell this team, they can't do something. Or you tell this team, like, yeah. you know, like you say, oh, like do your talking on the field. I remember Sweden made that mistake a few years back, you know, it's, oh, well, we'll, we'll do our talking on the field. Like you put that, you dangle that carrot in front of this team and they're going to just annihilate you. And so I love that. And they always mention to you specifically, Carly Lloyd is one of those players who has that mentality of like, you tell me I can't do it. I'm going to do it seven times in this next game, you know? And so when, the, when he tweeted that, I was like, Yes. Well, let's see, go. now I know we're going to win. <laughs> see, I, I, but I still, I, I, it shouldn't be that way. Right. Cause like even Jordan had that sort of mentality, but he lost a couple championships too, you know? And it's like, that doesn't make him not an incredible basketball player and an athlete. And so to hold these women, if like, God forbid, they don't win something. It's like, oh, well, see, we told you. Yeah. So, right. No, that's that not was the point. something that I had written down, like, where do we think this would be if they didn't win? See, like, I mean, no obviously way. they were filming throughout, you know, would this have still aired? Would it still be getting the reviews that it's getting? Like, would, I mean, obviously I think they'd be way further away from actually getting the equal pay, but in the same sense, like to me, another thing that shows true t character of these athletes and, and women is they understand that they might not even get it for them. How we, and we touched on this earlier, like they're doing it for like the kids. They're doing it, like how selfless is that? So to be that disciplined, that good, that composed and that selfless, how, how does that not win? That, that's what baffles me. Like, how does it not win? And and it's it's unfortunate that it's still not winning. They're still not getting this equal pay. Yeah, because it kind of goes back to like the 99ers too. And like I know Julie Foudy was saying at that time, it was literally people just being like, hey, darling, you should just be happy to be here, I think was her actual phrasing of it. And it's like, when you look at how far we've come, yes, we have come very far, but that is still the mentality at the end of the day of people looking at someone like Megan Rapino and going like, oh, but you do make a lot of money because you're Megan Rapino. So why are you complaining? And it's like still that idea of like, she's like, this, this isn't so that I can make millions of dollars every year. This is so the next generations will make money. And so that women in any profession feel empowered to speak out and say, this isn't right. This is inequality. And I have the right to speak out and to, to, you know, speak for myself. And I think that that pressure speak like they mentioned that too in the documentary where like there's more pressure on the men's team and it's like that was one where too I was like how the pressure that they have going into everything with this lawsuit plus the pressure of just being the number one team in the world and knowing that like we said it shouldn't be this way but if they do lose then yeah it's U.S. soccer feels like they have an aha moment over them like see you lost you don't deserve it now yeah, which is interesting. And, and while you were while you were talking, something popped into my head that honestly, I didn't even think about until the moment that just like a couple of seconds ago. It's interesting because I feel like a lot of people as a whole don't understand why athletes, not that they don't understand, but they don't accept why athletes in general get paid as much as they do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's a constant, like, why does that player make so much money? And it's like, they don't understand. Again, it goes down to, the revenue, the fans, the seats sold, the this, like all the boxes that they do. And, and, and that all just goes back to the discipline to be a professional athlete. Like I feel like we sell athletes short 
not like us, but like we as a whole sell athletes short period, because people don't understand, or they don't think that they deserve that much money, like these $150 million football deals or, or, or whatever it is. So on top of that, then to say now that they want equal and now that they want more, I think the common person doesn't necessarily relate to that as much as they was like the, the news anchor in there that was like, thank you for doing this because in my job, I don't get that either. And I feel like for some reason, the, the more like the wider range of public can understand that job role, but they can't understand sports. So I think it's even harder to get everyone that's not a sports fan behind this. Well, I think uh, for me, you know, barring from your term, it isn't a zero sum game, right? Like I think they deserve the pay that they deserve and they should be getting paid, you know, what they're worth. But I also think the average worker in America should be paid more as well. Obviously. <laughs> you know, call it like, but, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I just, but I, th- I think it is a weird symptom of like, it's always this or that, you know, everything's right. in contradiction of each other. It's like, no, both things can be true. They deserve to be paid this. And you deserve to be paid as, you know, whatever, a, a grocery store worker, a doctor, a nurse, more as well. You right. know, that's, um, I, I would like to say, you know, we were talking about this idea of, you know, kind of, uh, I don't know, moving forward in some sense. I, I don't know, or like solutions. I, I, I did want to, I, I wanted to make it a point in this to acknowledge the people that in my life got me acclimated with, um, with women's sports in general, but specifically um, U.S. soccer. So I remember, you know, I, re- I remember Brandy Chastain and Mia Hamm and Julie Foudy. Like, I remember those days. And then, you know, then it went on to Abby Wambach and so forth. Um, and, like, I just think it's important. Like, don't make the distinction of, like, we're going to watch women's soccer now. Like, we're just going to watch an amazing U.S. game. And that's how it was kind of, like, I, I don't know. Maybe I was, like, nine or I don't know. I, I forget what age I would have been, but the idea that like, we were just watching a great sporting event and it wasn't told to me of like, it's gender this or whatever, you know? And, and I, I fell in love with that team, you know? Um, so I think that, you know, that's important. And it seems like Amy, you kind of touched upon that with your friends where like you bring them to watch, you know, the women's games and a little bit, because it's, a, it's a, just exciting, you know, yeah. I mean, I know stuff. You mentioned the game at, at the Rose Bowl um, a few years ago. I actually went to that as well with two friends who have never been to a soccer game before, to a professional soccer game before. One was just like, I don't know. It sounds dope. This team's amazing. So, yeah, let's let's do it. The other one is absolutely in love with Megan Rapino. So she was <laughs> just like, if I can see her, then, yeah, let's go. Um, but no. And they had an amazing time just because it is it's just getting to watch that and and to see a team this good and working that well together whether you're a soccer fan or not and I think Phil to your point I think it was Jess McDonald who had the shirt on in the documentary at one point this is female athlete and female is crossed out because yeah. she's an athlete they are athletes yeah exactly um absolutely um um let's see one of the one of the things I wanted to, sorry, what? Oh, I hear some screaming in the background. Oh, uh, so apologies to everyone. Um, with the fireworks still kind of going on, I have to blast like random TV noise so my dog doesn't go ballistic with the random. Oh, you're a good dad. You're yeah, a cool. good dog, dad. Look up, uh, look up calming cat music. I know it's probably not cat specific. Uh, it's what I put on for my for my cat. It's very very nice music for him. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I wanted to kind of highlight the behind the scenes people, um, meaning like the legal team for um, for the women's team, because I thought bringing them and shining light on them was important. And here's a quote from um, Molly Levinson, uh, who was the spokeswoman for the players. What's so concerning is the players just feel this absolute lack of respect for who they are and what they do. And it doesn't just apply to the Federation. It's everyone around them in the ecosystem. The sad thing is a lot of these people are men. It's not that men are incapable of showing respect or acknowledgement, but a lot of these men are. Um, And I thought that was a a very poignant statement. And, and again, I just, I appreciated how they were brought in throughout the whole process as well to give us the play by play, if you will. Um, So, you know, um, you know, feel free to comment on just them as individuals or like 
their effect in the documentary for you. I'm not going to lie. Jeffrey had on a good tie. <laughs> Did anyone else notice that? I mean, was I wasn't like looking specifically. Out, like, it was a great, it was, but it just showed that he was like an aware dude of what was going on. And I'm also, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, I would have thought it would have been a female lead attorney. And I know that the, the co-attorney, you know, um, what was her name? Chardell, I think, um, you know, she was there as well. And at first I, I just didn't expect to see that typical lawyer looking guy for way lack of a better way to say that but the way he spoke it like gave me hope because men that are powerful in that situation can understand and they should understand and he, the way he said it was just very simple like for me this is just a very simple it's simple math you know and it's just i don't i don't understand how long they think they're going to get away with this but um I really liked how they broke down like the actual differences, you know, for each game win, the women get paid $8,500, the men get paid $17,000 for the world cup qualification, 750 to 2.5 million. Like all these, it's because I wouldn't, I didn't know that. And I feel like I'm pretty aware and follow things like this, but it's like, you don't get that information anywhere else easily or nowhere else is saying it the way that they did. And they laid it out again. So it could be easily understood for any viewer. Yeah, and I think you're you're right. He did an excellent job of just explaining everything. Cause I did the same. I was like, oh, well, do I do it? Cool. Okay. Not yeah. what I was expecting. Let's see. And then he started talking. I was like, oh my God, I fucking love this guy. Totally. Like the way that he just broke it down when he was like, all of the things that the women are doing better, all the things that you know they're doing better than the men, where they're outperforming, but the, you know, the men are getting nicer hotels, they're getting charters, women aren't, you know, flying coach, you know, they're getting more training resources, getting better fields. And the way that he broke it down at the end, it was he was basically just like they are doing the same job on the same size field, playing the same game. The only difference is the women are doing it better and they're getting paid less for it. Yeah. And when you, when you put it like that, like that really does just fully break it down to the point where you're like, what is your argument? That is, that is what's happening. Right. And everything that they've come up with was, you know, not valid. Yeah, not at all. And, you know, I, I think there was a strategy, I mean, you know, whether conscious or not, but like, you know, when our RBG um, made her landmark first case, it, you know, it was with a male client because she wanted to show that, that, that gender inequality affects both sides, right? And so in that sense, um, I, you know, uh, I think he's just a great lawyer in general, but I think there is some weight to like, if you have a man arguing in that way. Um, yeah, it was smart. Yeah. It you was know. smart to have him. And like I said, at first I was like, oh, why didn't, and then I'm like, oh, exactly. Cause if you're going to fight the dirty fight, you want someone who looks like they can fight the dirty fight. Yeah. So, you know, kudos, kudos to him, but yeah, I love, I love the communications team. Like it really felt like everyone, you know, the, 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 the team grew beyond just the players, you know, and, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, and it took on this, this incredible thing. Um, I, I will, was, oh, go ahead. No, no, no go ahead. I thought it was really cool. I don't know why this just popped in my head, but Megan Rapino being probably the household name. And even though they say that Alex Morgan's most popular, I don't think that's true. Maybe it is. Maybe she's the most popular, but I feel like now with everything that Megan's doing after these tweets, after everything, she's the more household name, you know, but I, and I feel like there was a very good balance. Like in the beginning, she didn't start it off like in the, you know, second, third, like in the middle end, it was like, it was more focused on her and you saw Sue Bird and you saw Sue, some of that, some of that stuff going on. But I feel like they really didn't just make it about the woman who kind of was leading it, how she called the meeting, how she did this. Again, I just keep going back to team and it's just like, it was so well put together as a team. Yeah, I think they did a good job of focusing on her enough because she is such a leader in this movement. And like you said, she's recognizable. It's, you know, it's going to draw people in. People are intrigued by her, you know, so even just to see more about her and learn more about her. But I think, yeah, the fact that they pulled from her personal experiences, from Jess McDonald's personal experiences, and then really like incorporated it into 
them as a team, you know, and kind of always circling back to that was just so good. And I think it's really important for people to understand those little pieces about Megan Rapino too, who don't fully understand who she is or where she comes from. Cause like she said, she's like, I come from as middle America kind of upbringing as you can without actually being from middle America. She's from Northern California, but it's like a very, you know, like quote unquote traditional American upbringing where it was a conservative area. She had, you know, pretty conservative parents. It was, you know, she has a brother who's gone through addiction struggles and, you know, has been in and out of prison and like all of these things to where I feel like so many of her haters are people who just assume that she was like some like liberal bred, you know, like born and raised in like some liberal like commune or something. And yeah. it's, it's not the case at all. And it, it shouldn't matter her upbringing anyways. But I do think that that was smart to kind of mention that because the people who are open minded enough to say, well, maybe I will give her a try now, even though it's a ridiculous, you know, like your upbringing shouldn't matter. But I do think that that was kind of a smart play on, on their part, too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, my only it, it's a like midway through the whole document, you know what I mean? So you kind of have to start the documentary to begin with type of thing. But um, but that's not a knock on, you know, it's it's it, it's. I don't, I don't know the, the one thing, you know, it's like kind of like all things in life where the people who are supposed to see this movie, unfortunately are not gonna, and it just sucks. That's that, exactly, that's exactly yeah. what I was trying to say when you came out guns blazing, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, I get it. I'm mad too. And I'm not just trying to be like, oh, whatever, someone else will do it. You know what I mean? But that's exactly, you couldn't have said it better. Like the people that need to watch this movie, unfortunately, probably won't be watching it well that's why i came out guns a blazing and shit i i might just have to like clip bait this and be like lfg fucking sucks you know and whatever and like yep. get them right in the first second <laughs> that's funny but i think there is and i think like even what amy was saying like when i went to the game in pasadena i was i wrangled friends too and it's like the more you talk about it, it's like we almost have to be the street team for women's soccer. You know what I mean? And it's like people trust. I'm sure people look to us because we're sports enthusiasts, trust our judgment, trust that it's entertaining. Then they want to see. I think we lost you. Yeah, we Me? lost you. Oh, you're back. You're back oh, now. No. You, you had a good rant. <laughs> I know. Hang on. Let me. Let, hopefully you don't lose me. Am I not? Okay. Are you, am I good now? Yeah. You are. Okay. I shut my Wi-Fi off because I'm plugged in. So maybe you can edit that out or who cares? Um, man, what was I saying? Oh, so it's like we need to be the street team and we need to put our money where our mouth is. You know what I mean? Like anytime there's a women's national game from San Diego to San Francisco, I go. I don't care. It's like you need to go. You need to make it fun. You need to show people. And it's like the more and more people that do that, all it will do is create more and more revenue. And then eventually, hopefully something will happen. But again, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know enough about the legal system. I don't know enough about what they're going through, but like, I feel a little bit like it's an uphill battle considering now we know it's been 1999 when this was first kind of approached, obviously in a different way, not a lawsuit, but it was like a complaint. And it's like to push that underneath the rug or underneath the carpet for like 20 years. It's like, I feel like it might take something like a boycott or them not playing to actually get something done. And yeah, was- and it is the the more, like you said, the more that people can bring into the sport and new fans and new energy, because there are so many like instances where you you look at them and you you just kind of re-realize the same things over and over again as a fan. And it's so amazing to see a new fan come in. And when you explain something like this to them or they watch this documentary and they're just like, what? They get paid how much less? Like it's it's mind blowing to us, but we've we've been paying attention to it all this time. So I think it's really powerful when someone who is completely fresh into all of it sees all of these facts. And that's why, you know, to Phil's point, it sucks that like the people who really should see this are the ones who aren't going to. But I'm excited for the ones, too, who maybe like just haven't thought about it, who are going to see it. Or who maybe are kind of like somewhere in the middle, like, I don't know, but like, I'll check it out. It seems like it could be a good documentary. Like, I'm excited for those people to hopefully have those moments of like rage that we're feeling and get involved. Right. Yeah. yeah, And I I think, too, there is a side to it. Like, you just got to keep bringing it to their face. Right. Like you were talking about with the Rose Bowl, 
you know, I remember like there is that um, side to it. They're, they're going to try to avoid as much as possible. But the, if you can break through, because like on audio commentary, I, I've seen plenty of games where, you know, the, the, the commentators could be screaming, but if the fans are louder, they'll get that voice, that message across and you just have to. And I think I would love to see more of that chanting at the guys games, you know, put the pressure on their asses. Yeah. You yeah, know, that is really interesting. That's something that until this, like, I didn't really think about that much, but yeah, the guys have not stepped up at all. And it was interesting in any know, terms in like, they failed for the fucking world cup. And I'm sorry, like no disrespect to Trinidad and Tobago, but like, our, our selection pool is far deeper than Trinidad and fucking Tobago. You, we should have been at the World Cup. Sorry, guys. You fucking crumbled. And all you had to do was play one fucking dumb game. Tell us how you really feel, Phil. Phil, just, I, I yeah, do. I real. do. I do. You know, I, 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 I so that's well, I, I understand my role on the team. The guys will be in the World Cup soon because the U.S. is going to host it. So aren't they by default in? Yeah. Woo. Be crushed yeah huh? it'll be fun to watch them make it all the way through the group stage that everyone makes it through and then <laughs> not go anywhere which is terrible right like this is so terrible that it's it's not forcing like we're choosing i get it but it's forcing us i'll speak for myself it's forcing me not to want to be a fan of something because it directly affects something else and the something else is better and more entertaining, but has less acknowledgement. Like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Cause like you said, like you don't want to be there to, to support us soccer to have any more of an argument, even though they don't have an argument to begin with, but what they are saying is their argument. And also the fact that, yeah, like I don't want to really support the men's team anymore after none of them have stepped up. Like you were saying earlier stuff, like in Hollywood, when this happened, yeah. Like male co-stars, sit there and say, no, my female co-star needs to get equal pay. And we have not seen that at all. And I'm, I'm sure there's so much like backroom politicking going on with all of this, but like at the end of the day, you, you have to speak up about something like this. Yeah. And they're just I, not. I mean, because honestly, if the script was flipped, the women would do it for the men. If something wasn't happening for the men's team that they deserved, whether it would have been the women getting the equal thing or whatever. Like if for some reason, I believe the women always will try and do what's right. And they would put their necks out on the line for the men. And they're not reciprocating that. Yeah. It's hypothetical, me, but I agree with it. Would. Uh, yeah. Agree. And like you're saying too, like they're, they're all like some of these players are already putting their necks on the line for not them. Yes. They're doing it for other women, but I mean, Megan Rapino, Carly Lloyd, like they're not going to be playing much longer. They're not even even if this were to turn around tomorrow, they're not going to see much of this money, if any of it, if it gets through, you know, so it's like they're already doing it for other people other than themselves. Yeah, well, I mean, I think, too, with this case, it was for back pay of up to a mil almost a, around a million dollars for players. So they'd probably see that. But they would I mean, it, if it ever happens. But I don't think you're right. I don't think that they're going to. I mean, Carly Lloyd, too, she's probably not, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to speak for her. I hope she plays forever. But, you know, she's probably one of the ones that have been around the longest that will retire sooner or later. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's and I love that Pino said that with one of the fans when they said, I hope you get equal pay. And she was like, I probably won't. But you might <laughs> like just flat out like that. That's where we're at, man. Well, that's that's the sad part about like, you, um, you know, in a lot of ways, a lawsuit is almost like a war of attrition, right? Where like, you know, m most times the corporations, if they could just grind you down and just keep it going, right? Then eventually, you know, it's just like, all right, this isn't worth it. And and certainly, I mean, I, I don't know if it was because of a court ruling or it was, you know, I, I'm not exactly sure how it all works, but the fact that like they had to ar arbitrate or mediate, whatever the term was during the women's season, is like okay it's just another layer and and again it, so that idea of just like war of attrition we're just going to grind you down till you shut the fuck up and all this goes away and and yeah it's a, obviously it's just heinous in that sense but um you know one word that we haven't said a lot that hasn't that i think we should is respect that's a lack of respect 
to yeah. make it happen during their season. That's we want you to fail. Yeah. We want to distract you so you lose. That's just it's just such a lack of respect. And it's it's at what means they'd rather see their own US team lose and be distracted. You know what I mean? Like ha- that's like talk about cutting off your nose to spite your face and then, you know, literally blowing up in your face cuz then they went and crushed. You know? Yeah, I think was it was it Press or Sauerbrunn who said that like they're like the last thing you want to do as a professional athlete is go through a lawsuit. Like the amount of hours and time and focus that it's taking away from what they actually need to be doing is just so immense. And like you said, that does come back to respect. It does like show that they're just so adamant about just beating their women's team. That's what they want to do. They, their U S soccer is just trying to beat them at this point. And we'll, we'll see, but it's, it's maddening watching them just go over and over and over again. And like you said, for 20 years now in different ways, but essentially for 20 years, this has been happening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, um, I want to talk about the ending of the documentary because it seemed to me, at least a, a very relatively abrupt where like I was taken on this journey and yeah, for the most part, you know, it is, it is very inspiring at like just the resolve these women have, you know, even, but they shouldn't, you know, like no one and, and, and so forth. And then we kind of get to the end of like, it, you know, um, not that everything like is wrapped up or whatever, but it's just like, it, it switches tones and it's like, all right, we're kind of done. So can you guys speak to that? And like, you know, and also specifically in the context of like, where, how, where do we stand today? And how do you feel about, you know, today, you know, in, in the fight for this? I mean, I honestly, again, as you were speaking, this popped in, so who knows, but <laughs> I kind of think maybe they thought they were going to win. I mean, the U.S. Federation or the U.S. Federation or the women? The the women. women. I feel like the movie was built up a little bit for like a Cinderella ending, Mm -hmm. you know? And and I feel like when it didn't, it was kind of like it was abrupt. It was ridiculous what they said. Like, I feel like it was really genuine to the emotion that was going on in them. It was like, are you serious? This is it. This is what they're saying. Um. You know, because really, where can it go? And I don't, to be honest, I don't know exactly where things are at right now. I don't know if that's public knowledge. I don't know if either one of you know. I'm but not aware. It would, I think it's interesting timing that this came out a week or two before, a couple of weeks before the Olympics, where the team is going to shine again and probably win. They've got that much more added pressure to bring home a gold. And I'd be really curious to see what happens after that. You know, will there be some big, you know, protests, so to speak, will people, I mean, but it's hard too, right? Because in Tokyo, there's no fans. So it's there's not no fans, like, even press, like, like it's, it's a very distance yeah. and, and rightfully so. I mean, there, there's a no, lot no, no. of I to- I totally pandemic get. stuff. Safety first. I totally get that. But that whole stadium chanting equal pay, that whole thing that happened at the world cup that happened at, you know, national games like that, that won't be present. So I'm wondering how, what really will happen. I really hope it just doesn't fizzle out and go away. You know, like I really, really hope that this movement gains momentum. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting. Like I hadn't thought about that either, but yeah, I mean, I I agree that I think this documentary, like legally speaking, all of their legal team and everyone was like, this is, this should be a slam dunk. Like I think Jeffrey Kessler, in the beginning, he was like, I wouldn't have taken this case if I didn't think I could, we couldn't win. You know, like, I mean, I think to legal minds looking at this, mine is not a legal mind, but to those brilliant legal minds looking at it, you look at it and you go, of course. So I do think that like they did kind of build this up and it will be interesting that, yeah, again, we're going into another major tournament. Again, they're still waiting on because I think, the, you know, the way it was left there is that it'll be going to the Ninth Circuit. So they're still, I would assume, waiting on some of that stuff where I don't know when, you know, those proceedings will actually happen. But it's just kind of crazy to think that here we are at another major tournament, still waiting, still having to go through the motions of everything. And I do think that I'm, I'm saying that I'm hopeful that it will maybe not do as much as the world cup did, 
you know, there might not be that big of an impact. Like you said, there's going to be no chanting in the crowds or anything like that. But I do hope that this documentary coming out a few weeks before it will be a good lead up of like people remembering and going, that's right. I forgot this was a thing or I didn't know this was a thing. And now I want to watch the women and see how they do even more. Yeah. The one thing I feel pretty confident on is that uh, regardless of who retires in the coming years, the baton has been passed to the young, t- you know, oh, like I, they no my, it, like I, I sincerely want this to be wrapped up as soon as possible, but let's just go worst case scenario that this goes on for years and years. I don't think, I don't see that group of women at all ever wavering in any sense. And no. I also don't think, and I'm also encouraged because I don't think the true evangelical fans, and I don't mean that in a religious sense, more of like just, you know, really no, back in the team, um, they're not going to give up on this either. You know, like you two, I don't, I don't see you guys giving up the fight tomorrow or anything like that. So no. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by and that. I think more people hopefully will get on board. And again, it comes back to like putting your money where your mouth is. Go out and buy the USA shirt. Go to a game. Support your local club sport. You know what I mean? Like the women's clubs, you know, stuff like that. Like it's the only way really, you know, like sitting home and being mad isn't really going to do much. Yeah. And I think so much, a lot, I think a big shift did happen when their marketing kind of shifted a little too, because I know growing up just being, you know, playing soccer and loving it, watching it. It was always catered to like, if you're a little girl, you should watch the U.S. women's team. And it's like, yeah, but also if you're a little boy, also if you're an adult grown 75 year old man, also if you're anyone can watch this team, it doesn't have to just be like young women who are going to the games who want to be like this team someday. And I think that like the more like widespread it gets, you know, like the the more support and that's where the money comes in for revenue too, that like more people are getting interested. Yeah. And I think that's happening. Like, I do think that's happening because I feel like, you know, at the core being of a human and not to get like super deep and everything, like everybody loves a winner. Everybody loves an underdog story. So again, it's a lot of pressure to put on these women, but thankfully they are amazing and they're super talented. And I agree with you, Phil, a lot saying that the baton has been passed. Like these younger players coming up and up, they're all just as good they're more aware of the situation. It's like, it, it's a well-oiled machine, that team. And I feel like any players that get popped in, it's just going to keep being good and good and good. So I'm not really, you know, worried about that either. But I do think that, you know, it will continue. It will continue to be a fight. Um, but I don't know. I want to stay optimistic that there'll be change, I, you know? I, I mean, I'm optimistic in the sense that there are more – professional women's teams in Europe. Um, like Real Madrid has now, they're putting together an incredible women's team. Um, and, you know, and that's like in guy terms, like that's like the pinnacle club, you know, um, whatever, you know, people have their own talking opinions about it. Huh? Talking to a Chelsea fan. That's a, but, 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 I mean, but you can't argue uh, objectively, like whether you like them or not, right. You know um, they have a lot of money behind them and then, and, and usually spend on big players. They're starting to do that with the women. Um, and I think, I think this does raise ultimately the level of just the, 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 the game in general. Like, I mean um, you know, the Brazilian women's team is really good. Like there's a lot of really good players and, and speaking to the idea of like, just, just the quality you know, taking a free kick, whether, you know, in the men's game or the women's game is equally as hard. You have to have the same, you have to still have skill to curve it over the wall and beat the keeper to get it in. You know, like th- there's nothing you can't be uh, like, th- you know what I mean? It's not like, okay, let's say if it was basketball, the guys get a 10 foot rim and the women get a five foot rim or something like that. Right. Like it's not, it's still the same scenario in soccer. And for like Megan Rapino to, to be able to score free kicks like she does, it's that same talent, you know? 100%. Alex Morgan kicking a volley, same talent, you know? It's like, that's it. It's not like, oh, well, whatever. The, 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 quality, like the standards are different. They're the same. They're the same. Um, yeah, that's why it goes back to um, Kessler again when he just put it so well of just it's the same field, it's the same game, it's the same size, you know, goals, it's the same size field, and it's just the women are doing it better and getting paid less. 
Yeah. That's it. Absolutely. Again, too, I think that, you know, when we touch on like, you know, the how can we get involved type thing, right? Because it's like, we want to leave with like a solution, right? Like what's, Absolutely. what's an yes. actionable item for people? And again, the more and more like, sure, the national team is this level, but more and more they're having, you know, each city is getting, there's more and more women's team popping up and certain things, which again, just is a true testament to the power of a group of women. You take Angel City FC, for example, which is going to be the new team in Los Angeles here. You got a group of women investors led by Natalie Portman to get together and have a team. Like the women are starting to come together and there's nothing more dangerous than a group of women on task for the same goal. So again, Chicago's got a team. They got a. I I don't like Chicago, but like Amy Garcia is a friend, and she's you know. She's part, it, but Chicago's had yeah. it. The Chicago Red Stars have been around for at least fifteen years. No, I think they're getting another one. Oh, uh, anyway, they have Chicago that, Red Stars. They they've been around for a long time. But next year will be. I mean, I know we're all in LA doing this, so I don't know where our reach is. But buy a shirt, buy something. I got season tickets. I talked four of my friends into getting season tickets with us. We put in a deposit, like put your money where your mouth is and support these women because they deserve it. Yes. Yeah. Or at the, you know, watch a game tweet. Like there's, there's a cheap alternative as well. Well, you know? no, but I'm saying, well, I get, I get what you're saying. I get, what you're, buy a t-shirt. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I always like to get, you know, give the people like just base base. Here's like the lowest minimum that you can. Five dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, there's, right. But I'm just saying there's a lot of, because like the women's national team, like it's not always going, it's not always the Olympics, it's not always the World Cup. There are local teams and they don't play in every city. I'm just saying like bringing people to the games, feeling the energy of the games, that's what hooks people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think that's something that's important too, because so often like I get it, like U.S. women's national team games there's an energy to those games that like you just can't beat anywhere else. Yeah. But like, it's like almost like people forget that like those same women are playing on these teams here. Like, no, it's not a world cup final. It's not going to be like, you know, but it's still, it's still quality soccer with so many of these women that are spread out across the league. And you're still going to get to see these players, you know, doing, doing their thing and being the best at their game only you can do it in your home city or you can do it somewhere else and go see them. Like it's, it's here. Exactly. That's what I was trying to like touch on the accessibility to, to get involved. It doesn't always just have to be at that level. Like there are, you know, more local events to go to. Cause I mean, not for nothing, nothing beats going to a live sports event period. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's incredible. And by the way, it's only like once as, as the local teams become better and there's more competition, it only raises the 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 game in general you know yeah. um because yeah. there is that fiercer competition and whatever right and uh, i mean that speaks on the national level too of you know like going into the olympics the u.s have a tough group they're playing a lot of good teams in their in their group play and that's a good thing that you yeah. want to see that you know like you want to see teams at their best playing other teams at their best and i know this kind of goes back to some of the stuff in the documentary too about as far as like, yeah, it goes all the way, you know, like US Soccer Federation has its issues with sexism and misogyny. And then you have FIFA, who is like, has every issue with sexism and misogyny. And I think it's important to make the distinction between the two because not oh, everyone understands that. And I think they did a good job in, in the documentary of explaining like FIFA has this money and then they allocate it based in tournaments and then federations have that money from there. And it's like, it goes down the line and so do their ideals. And you can see that because FIFA is extremely sexist as well. But it's always like, you know, again, Carlos Cordera at the at the parade saying, well, we've invested more than other countries have for their women. And I think Megan Rapino said it best of like, just because, how did she say, just because. I wrote it down. Yeah, like just because you're exactly better. What you're going to say, just because, just because you're doing better than just because you're better than someone who is bad doesn't mean necessarily that you're good. Yes. I was just true. like, she's so smart. Yes. <laughs> Cause it's so true. And it's, you know, like when people like, again, gave them shit for beating Thailand that much. And they're like, Oh, congratulations that you beat a team that's completely underfunded. And it's like, that's, that's not what this documentary is about. That's not what that win was about. And 
I think that people understanding the differences there is, is really important too. But I think, yeah, R- Rupino just, as always, crushed it with that statement. Yeah. And yeah. by the way, like FIFA is not only sexist, they're also pretty corrupt. And so, you know, to, to like try to pass the buck, be like, well, it's FIFA's fault. It's like, okay, you realize they're corrupt. So yeah. do you really want to be siding with them? You know? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, all right. Well, listen, we could, we could talk ad nauseum about this. There's so much to unpack, but, um, I truly want to thank you guys. And, um, uh, b- before we sign off, if there's anything that I haven't allowed you to speak your mind about, please, you know, don't, don't be remiss to, to say what you got to say. So why don't we, Amy, why don't we start with you? Yeah. I mean, no, yeah. Thanks for, for putting this together. Cause I mean, I was actually, I was at dinner last night talking to a couple of friends. I was like, I was fucking amped up. I was like leaning in and I was like, we're going to talk about this and I'm going to talk about this. And like, I was ready to go. So I'm glad that we, we all got to just have fun and get feisty with this and just be real and talk about so many things. Cause I think it is just such an important issue. And I just think, I remember back to like when I first, you know, I, I've watched soccer my whole life. I've played it, love it. And I remember the first time I realized that like the women were wearing like hand-me-down jerseys in the nineties from the men's teams. And like for someone who was growing up playing soccer with posters of Mia Hamm and like Christine Lilly and Brianna Scurry on my walls to have that realization as like a young girl to go like, wait, they get paid how much? Wait, they have to work full-time jobs. This, no, this is their job. I don't understand. Like to have that realization just sucks. It fucking sucks when you are looking at these women and idolizing them and knowing that like they have to work other jobs just to be able to do this and it's it's sad that that is still a thing now that players like Jess McDonald have to make decisions of like can she support her and her son and continue to play and you know live out her dream and so I think it's it's just it's crazy looking at it from that scope of like for that it's been happening for so long but i do think when you look at the the progress that we've made and the women who are like at the helm right now like to your guys point they're not going anywhere they're not stopping with this fight ever like this is going to continue until something is done and i don't know what that's going to look like but i'm so confident that they are going to make it happen and also that they're just going to keep winning and keep proving themselves on the field and off the field too well said stuff yeah i mean i totally agree i have to i'm super stoked that cnn and hbo max had a place to put this um I feel like sometimes films like this are a little bit more risky to do, to produce, to make, to get the funding, whatever. I think it was really, really well done. Um, I encourage everyone to go watch it. I feel like it would be great if somehow there was a link so that people that didn't have HBO Max were able to watch this. I don't know if that exists anywhere. Maybe it does on YouTube or something. Not that I'm telling people to pirate movies. I just want it to get out there. Maybe that was bad of me to say. But um, yeah, I'm super stoked we got together. It was really, really fun to talk about this. And again, I just really hope that the movement continues because I think it's one worth fighting for. And I do think that eventually it will pay off. Um, Just need stamina. And a lot of those girls have a lot of stamina. So keep the hustle going, girls. That's right. Pun not intended, but I'll say pun intended either way. It should pay off. Yeah. Uh, well thank you both for joining me um hopefully uh you know uh yeah hopefully we we get this message across but um thank you to the audience you know you specifically listening watching um whatever uh questions or thoughts you might have please share them down in the comment section um or hit us up on social media we'll give our uh, handles in a minute but you know overall you might agree on some points you might disagree on some points uh, I don't know. For me, I always have a stance. Even if you disagree with me, as long as we're close, uh, you know, we're we have a good discussion about it, um, civil. I'm fine to have that discussion. Um, yeah, so. and I think that's the first step, right? Creating a space for a conversation because there needs to be more conversations about this, so that maybe at some point the people that can actually make the change will understand why it's so important. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I said all social media, so go ahead, uh, you know, pass them out, as they say in class. <laughs> Amy? Yeah, um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Amy Maestri. And you guys can find me on Instagram, Twitter too, but I don't 
really tweet a lot. Uh, I should tweet more. At I A M S T E N Z. That's I am Steph Z. Thanks for listening. And I'm at Phil Speed Tech. And thank you, um, everyone. Until hopefully next time. Thank you.